Okay, um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mario Juric. I'm a member in the School of Natural Sciences here at the Institute for Advanced Study and chair of the organizing committee of Faster GPU 2007, the workshop on general purpose computing and on graphical processing units in astronomy and astrophysics. It is my pleasure to welcome you here this morning in Bloomberg Hall, the home to the School of Natural Sciences. I thank you for exhibiting such high interest for, and for coming in such large numbers on relatively short notice from places as near as an office next door and as far as Tokyo, Japan and Perth, Australia. I hope this workshop and the Institute will fulfill your expectations in the two days to come. This workshop was organized by a committee consisting of Eric Ford, Professor of Astrophysics at the University of Florida, Pete Hutt, Professor of Interdisciplinary Studies here at the Institute, and myself. However, it would not, without the, it would not be without the help and support of the School of Natural Sciences, its staff and members, and the entire Institute that this event would be possible. In this respect, I want to especially acknowledge the help and support of Michelle Sage, our administrative officer, Susan Higgins and Don Dunbar, our academic assistants, James Stevens, our computing manager, and Scott Tremaine, the Richard Black Professor of Astrophysics in the School of Natural Sciences, and encouragement for organizing this workshop. I also wish to thank the speakers, who are all, I hope, who agreed to participate with a set of wonderful talks and NVIDIA Corporation who is supporting this workshop with a full day course on GPU computing and a donation of GPU hardware. Why have we gathered here? We are here because graphics processing units, or GPUs, are rapidly emerging as a powerful cost-effective platform for high performance parallel computing. The current generation of GPUs supports capabilities already in teraflop range, an order of magnitude greater than the most powerful off-the-shelf CPUs and the next generation promises to maintain and increase this margin while adding support for capabilities needed for scientific applications, such as computation and double precision. Such an increase in computational power opens up new opportunities to explore previously inaccessible problems in astronomy and astrophysics. However, it also brings challenges of adapting existing and devising new algorithms and codes that will run efficiently on intrinsically massively parallel GPU architectures. The goal of this workshop is to explore and discuss the applicability to astrophysical problems and the future of general purpose computing on GPUs, also known as GPGPU. To achieve this goal, we brought together astronomers and astrophysicists, that is, most of you, with colleagues from other areas of science where GPGPU techniques have been successfully applied, and with colleagues from the industry who will demonstrate GPU hardware, programming tools, and GPU techniques. Conceptually, this workshop is divided in four parts. We'll begin with an overview of GPUs by David Lepke of NVIDIA. David will review the current state of GPU and introduce the Compute Unified Device Architecture, or CUDA, an NVIDIA technology that enables and simplifies the writing of general purpose programs for GPUs. Next, we will have a series of talks about, re about real experiences with GPUs and CUDA in scientific applications. However, to enrich our discussions, we will also hear talks on possible alternatives to GPUs, such as great VR, cell, and FPGAs. Complementing the talks are more than 24 posters on topics ranging from views of GPUs in hydrodynamics to GPU signal processing in radio astronomy. They will be on display in the dining hall building, and I urge you to go and see them during the poster session later this evening. Following lunch this afternoon and continuing tomorrow morning, we will have two days of hands-on courses on GPU programming with CUDA, given by Mark Harris, David Lupke, and Lars Neeland of NVIDIA. In these sessions, they will show us how to efficiently write, test, optimize, and run GPU programs. During the sessions, you will have the ability to log on to our demo GPU systems and try writing and running some GPU GPU code yourself. Also note that Mark, David, and Lars will be here all day today and tomorrow morning, and that we should use their presence to find out everything we want to know about GPUs and NVIDIA's plans for their future. Finally, we close tomorrow with a roundtable discussion on things we've seen and heard in these two days and how they will impact astrophysical computing in the years to come. The goal of our discussion will be to summarize our collective experiences and ideas of where GPGPU is going, can we and how can we put it to work on our problems, and is it, in the words of A.G. Wells, 
the shape of the things to come. I wish to finish with a few remarks of an operational nature. First, a note about a few last-minute changes to the program and our speaker lineup made after the schedules distributed in your welcome packages were already printed. We will try to get the new schedules for you uh, during the coffee break or maybe later. Unfortunately, Paul Woodward and Paul DeMorris, despite their best efforts, were not able to be here to give their talks. This is also uh, a lesson to the conference organizers not to organize a conference in the midst of a flu session. Instead, we will hear a talk by Walter on real-time signal processing for radio astronomy. Talk by Nail. Only scheduled for sa for Saturday, it will be moved to the second science and GPU sessions today. Secondly, to accommodate a significant fraction of you who are continuing to supercomputing of seven in Reno on Saturday, we have switched to lunch and closing roundtable tomorrow. We therefore expect to end the whole program around 12:30 before lunch. So all these changes have been made in the schedule available on the website and the schedule posted by the lecture hall entrance. We will, as I said, we will try to get the new schedule printed and ready for you uh, in the next couple of hours. Another note is that today before lunch, we will have a group photo taken on in front of Pool Hall. We kindly ask you to assemble there immediately after the end of morning session and before lunch. Lunch and dinner will be served at the Institute Dining Hall across the lawn from Bloomberg Hall, and the Institute Dining Hall being marked on the map in your welcome packages. Uh, note that to dine in the dining hall, you must have purchased the lunch and dinner tickets, sold its registration. It is therefore important, if you already haven't, that you register during the next coffee break. Posters will be on display in the dining hall building, and the time between the last session today and the start of dinner has been reserved for poster viewing. If you have a poster, you may put it up in the dining hall at any time today after lunch, where they can stay on display until tomorrow afternoon. However, please make sure to take your posters down by tomorrow by 3 p.m. on Saturday. We will close that, that time and you will not be able to enter it and take your posters down. Finally, I want to point out that courtesy of NVIDIA and the Institute, about a dozen computers running Red Hat Linux 5 and equipped with NVIDIA cards and appropriate CUDA toolkits have been made available for your use in the SNS physics library upstairs that also serves as the overflow room for this workshop. They can also be accessed remotely by using the usernames and passwords given out to you in your welcome packages. For instructions on how to use these machines and for all other computer-related problems, please consult the instructions in your packages. At the end, I wish you all an interesting and productive two days here at the Institute. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me or to contact any of the organizers. You can identify, you can identify us by, by the red bar on the bottom of our name tag. And now I will yield the podium to Eric Ford, who will chair the first session and introduce our next speaker. Again, thank you for coming, and uh, thank you for your attention.